All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about can money buy you happiness as far as knives are concerned. And ultimately, we're going to be talking a little bit about clones versus real deals. Are the real deal knives worth the extra money or are these clones or these collaborations just as good and i think if you have to summarize you know a knife being just as good you probably know the answer yourself a lot of times when it comes down to it you know if you want the real deal there's no replacement uh, when it comes down to it however it is worth mentioning uh, these knives as far as their use i do think there is some use to knockoff or clone blades now, I did a video similar to this not too long ago, but I thought I would break it down too with this Emerson here and or this Kershaw Emerson and a couple real Emersons. And for example, I might actually use this Horseman. It's a little bit closer to the size and overall shape to this CQC6 by Kershaw. So let's talk about it and let's see, is it really worth the extra money for the Emerson? Now, in fairness, the Emerson might be one of the not so great examples. We're going to talk about the ZT collab versus a real hinder as well in the video. But the Emerson itself is a pretty unchanged knife. From the time that it was first designed, you know, they still use the same steel. Uh, this is a CQC, CQC 8 Mini or Horseman, as they are called, uh, as for the real Emerson here. I also have a Mini Commander. And for example of the Kershaw Emerson. This is a CQC6, and this one's a little bit different. This one uses the D2 tool steel. As far as uh, the steel goes, there are some 8CR13 MOV blades out there as well. So as far as it goes, you know, do you see, I guess this is about a $50 knife um, on average, and this little guy right here, this Emerson, is wildly varying in price. I got this one for $120, but normally you're not going to be able to find them for that cheap. They're normally running north of $200, especially for these older vintage models like the Horsemen that are no longer made. Um, you know, you're not going to be able to buy them new, so they are more collectible and subsequently more expensive. So as far as it goes with this thing, like I said, the design and materials are reasonably unchanged. You do have titanium liners, so that's what a lot of people don't know is the liners on these are not steel, they are titanium, but then you have slabs of G10 on either side. Of course, this is a liner lock blade, and for as far as steel goes, you are running 154 cm. Now, this is not terribly high quality steel or high-end steel by uh, today's consideration. However, it is completely serviceable and really just fine. Now, in the other corner, we have the Kershaw Emerson. And this one is definitely heavily inspired by Emerson knives. Of course, this is the CQC6 by Kershaw. And so it definitely draws a lot of inspiration. However, it is different in its own right. Of course, the biggest difference you'll notice is that these Kershaw Emersons use a stainless steel um, frame lock. So this whole side, unlike on a traditional Emerson, which would be um, or I should say clip side, would be a G10 slab. This is a full frame lock. And the reason why I think they chose to go this way was primarily weight, where they can make this stainless steel lock bar side nice and thin, and also still um, pretty rigid, and you don't have to use as much G10. So I think that was primarily a cost cutting slash weight saving thing because they don't have to use as much G10 for a steel um, you know, liner, fully steel linered um, knife and these weigh a little bit more but honestly around the same weight as an emerson emerson knives as a whole are not particularly lightweight both of these knives are around six ounces so anyways going to that other noticeable difference like i said this is a d2 version of the blade so some of these come in 8cr 13 mov and i definitely am not a huge fan of that steel as far as edge retention goes but the D2 tool steel version is plenty fine, pretty acceptable. Um, and honestly, as far as a knife goes for this um, price range, you know, around the $50 mark, D2 is a good choice. Certainly comparable to things like the Civivi Elementum and other knives that are similar, you know, price point and size. So totally acceptable, totally fine with me. And in fact, in some ways, some people would consider uh, the edge retention and 
toughness of D2 better than 154 cm. Now, one thing that's also worth noting is that, like I said, this is an Emerson or Kershaw diversion of an Emerson. So it is diverse in its own ways, primarily being that it is a flat ground with two bevels. So on your traditional Emersons, they are a V ground blade. So you can see on this side, even though this, side, this blade is a little bit used, there really isn't much of a bevel on this side because these are more uh, V ground chisel uh, ground blades. So they have one bevel and the other side is not beveled. So this is more like a traditional knife. And honestly, I kind of like that with this Emerson. So in addition to that though, it is very similar. Of course, you have your notable wave function there or wave feature. You also have your thumb disc that can be changed out to a wide plethora of different disc-like things. So it is around the same size too, a little bit smaller than the, the real deal Emerson's. Um, and just as a whole, the uh, Kershaw Emerson's are a little bit smaller for the most part. There are some that are more uh, similarly sized, but they are a little bit heavier too. So other than that, um, I will say, I think the fit and finish is a little bit better on these uh, Kershaw's. And I think that's just because Kershaw is mass producing these and they have the ability to give them a true fit in. Uh, fit really clean fit and finish so all of these screws are you know perfectly aligned um, everything on this is just what you would expect from a production level knife whereas on an emerson like a true emerson you can see here that it is definitely a little rough around the edges there are some areas where the g10 doesn't quite line up with the liners um, especially if you take these guys apart the cutouts for like the um detent on the knife is very rough very jagged there's there's like metal pieces that were not fully machined out. So uh, there's definitely a lot of like almost concerning level quality control with true Emerson's, but that is kind of the way they are. One cool thing that the uh, Kershaw's do carry over as well, and I think is worth mentioning, is while it is different hardware, um, they still keep in mind that simplistic design of having your flat head uh, or slotted bit for adjusting your pivot, and you have um, Phillips head bits for all of your body screws. So your screws for your clip, your screws that hold the body together, um, all of those are going to be just Phillips head. So I do think that is really cool that they kept that part of the Emerson like simplicity there and alive because I think one of the biggest attractors to Emerson and one of the biggest things that it has going for it is it is a very simple, very rugged and overall robust design that is designed to be easily field careable. So, you know, you can care for this in the field with a good amount of ease. Once again, finding things like a Phillips head, is gonna be much easier than maybe a proprietary, you know, Torx bit. Um, so definitely things to keep in mind and things that I think are pretty cool about the Emerson that were carried over to the Kershaw Emerson. Now, as far as which one to go for, undoubtedly, unless you are going for the true Kershaw name, um, or unless you're going undoubtedly, unless you're going for the Emerson name, I think it's going to be really hard to justify the extra close to $200 that a real Emerson will cost you. Once again, these are around 250 to 240, you know, um, 250 to $240. Whereas this guy you can get for, you know, 50, 60 bucks and call it a day. So it's going to be very hard to justify the 200 extra dollars when realistically what you are getting when it comes to the real deal is a knife that might be slightly lighter weight and might offer slightly better corrosion resistance in the 154 cm. But aside from that, you know, honestly, with these Emersons, unless you're going for the name, the quality really isn't much different than on something like this Kershaw. Like I said, I think the biggest advantage that this uh, Emerson has is it does have both sides are G10. The titanium liner locks are there, they like they exist, but realistically, I really don't see much of a weight savings when I hold this knife and physically feel it. And of course, when you put it on a scale, you know, you might get a quarter inch extra blade length for the same weight, but realistically, it's not doing that much for you as far as weight savings go. 
and uh, yeah, for being so much more expensive, it is definitely hard to justify. In addition to the thing I really love about these uh, Kershaw Emersons is the fact that they have that flat grind with, you know, of course, dual bevels. So they are much easier to sharpen and get a really wicked edge on. I have yet to uh, put this one on my wicked edge, but I will, and I will sharpen this guy and give it a nice mirror polish. But uh, yeah, I really do like these Kershaws, and I think the value proposition for them is definitely there. Once again, I would say probably stick to the D2 versions. The HCR 13 MOV is definitely a big drop in blade steel. I wish they made all of the Kershaw Emerson collabs in D2 just as a rule, but you do have to watch yourself. I think the things like the CQC7 um, and a few others are still 8CR13 MOV, but there are quite a few to choose from that are D2, and I think the most pocketable one has to be the CQC6 because, once again, it is very, very much in line with the size of a true, like, mini Emerson, like this mini CQC8 or the mini Commander. You know, it is right there in line with the size of it so really do like these guys um and once again kind of going back to the topic of like can you know money buy you happiness as far as it goes i would say it's it's a bit of yes and no once again if you really truly want that emerson name you have to get an emerson and i do think that there are some cool um designs and features of the emerson and personally something like this mini commander you know there is no kershaw offering for a commander or mini com so having something like a real deal mini commander you do have to go with you know the real emerson pay the emerson price for it to have it and do i regret buying either of my emersons no i definitely don't in fairness i did get a really good deal on both of them but you know, I really do like my Emersons, and for me, it was about getting that name and, like, having a true-to-form Emerson. It's kind of similar to, you know, the Hinderer. You know, I do like my um, ZT Hinderer here. I think my ZT Hinderer is pretty cool, and as far as a user and abuser goes, I think that this is an excellent choice. Um, ZT0462, which is what this guy is, is great, and... Uh, very slicey, super sharp, and I touched it up on my Wicked Edge, and is a great knife, but at the same time, too, there is no replacing um, the hinderer as far as, like, it goes. A real deal hinderer will always be a cut above, and just offers a level of performance and customization that you just can't get, and I think that is one thing, um, kind of looking at real deal companies, like the real hinderers, the real uh, Emersons, is you know, when you go to something like a collaboration like this Kershaw Emerson or this ZT um, Hinderer, you get a, you're locked into a specific blade shape, design, and steel. Once again, you know, there's not a lot of options for, there's not a lot of options or variants in design, steel, um, and overall kind of choices for this Emerson. Even though there are a good amount of uh, Emerson Kershaw collabs, there still really isn't as much of a variance. Like once again, there's no um, commanders, uh, there's no Kershaw, you know, Emerson commanders. And similar to, you know, the ZT0462 um, or 562, sorry, um, is that, you know, you get locked into this design, you get locked into this steel, and it's not a bad steel. This one uses 20 CV. Once again, you know, really nice carbon fiber handles. But as far as it goes, you know, when it comes to a real hinderer, you can choose the blade shape that you want. And I chose in this case, you know, a uh, recurved blade. This one does use CPM 20 CV, so it is the same steel, but there is a wide variety. I mean, with hinderer especially, you can choose 01 tool steel, you can choose CPM S35VN, S45VN, 20CV, um, S30V. There's so much uh, option to these hinderers that, you know, whatever flavor of blade that you want, you can get. Not to mention the aftermarket customization. You can replace your handle scales. You can replace your little lock tabs or your um, little clip tab, your clip, uh, with just about anything you want. So, there's a lot of customization that just doesn't exist with something like the uh, ZT collab and with something like this Kershaw collab. Now, at the end of the day, if that kind of stuff doesn't matter to you, if you don't want like aftermarket pocket clips, aftermarket different, you know, things, um, you know, like different aftermarket um, 
thumb discs and stuff like that, you can, you know, get these more generic like Kershaw ZT collabs and they will serve you well. They're just not going to be as representative of the actual quality and representative of the actual form factor and build of the real deal because this is made in the likeness of this but you know this is not an xm18 it's made to look kind of like an xm18 and sometimes that's for the better uh, but most of the time it's you know just missing the mark a little bit um, now i will say one big thing that i do love about the collaborations is that it does give you a lot of the likeness the design quality things like the wave feature but in a knife that you're not as afraid to abuse because at the end of the day something like my xm18 here or even my minicom here like this is a true vintage 2009 um, minicom and you know this is to an extent a very collectible knife and you know this especially being in its condition even though it's not perfect it still is in very good condition you know um, this is a collectible knife and so you know when it comes to you know what would I want to use to cut open bags of cement uh, or quick crete um, you know you'd probably want to choose something like the Kershaw Emerson collab that gives you a lot of what the Minicom or the CQC8 mini gives you like as far as form feature and function but in a knife that this is far easier to replace than you know a Minicom and far cheaper to replace if you break it or lose it um, than something like a CQC CQC8 Mini. Like this Horseman, you know, like I said earlier, you know, this is no longer made. So this is another collectible knife that, you know, if you damage or break it, your ability to get another one is not as easy as this. You know, I can order 10 of these on Amazon and get them tomorrow. Whereas this guy, I would have to scour the webs and see, you know, there are horsemen out there. They do exist, but, you know, trying to get one is not as easy. So definitely things to consider um, when it comes to it. To me, you know, I think that when it comes to like buying knife happiness or, you know, money making you happy as far as a knife collection goes it really depends on what your expectations are if you want a real hinder a real emerson a real chris reeve you have to go with the real deal there's no real work around at least in my personal experience however if you do want knives that have a lot of the form function and features of those knives like the emersons with this kershaw emerson but you also want a knife that you're not afraid to abuse that is where these uh collaboration knives or these knockoff knives are really useful and come in very handy. Anyways, guys, that kind of sums it up. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.